So, welcome to the first part of the Car AI series. In the intro part, we have set up our starting project. So everyone who is watching this should have this specific scene. It's a small island and I've already included the car which you can use. The first thing we're going to do is define a path where our cars need to drive. As you can see, I've painted a small track over here, but without any help, the car doesn't know where the path is. So the way we're going to set up this path is we're going to make a few empty game objects. These are the blue dots and these represent the nodes. Then to visualize our path for ourselves, we're going to draw a line in the scene so we can see what our path looks like. So to start off, we're going to create a new empty game object and this will be our path parent. So we call this our path. Then we create a first empty child. This is also an empty game object and we will name this node. Make sure your parent is reset so everything is 0 and the skill is 1 and the nodes will also have the 0 and 1. Next up we're going to create a script to visualize our nodes. So we create a new c -sharp script and we call the script path. Open it up and the first thing we're going to do is remove those functions, we don't need them. Let's make our variables first. We have a public color and we call it line color and instead of an array we're going to use a list and normally you can't use a list so we need to use a new namespace. We do this by writing using system.collections.generic and in the generic we find the list so now we can use it. The way we make a new list is we write a private because we're in a private list. Then we say list with a capital and between those brackets we say transform because it's a list type of transform. Then we give the name like a normal variable and uh, let's call this nodes and we equal this to a new list of type transform. Make sure you use this round brackets at the end. So now that we have a place where we can store our nodes, we need to find them. So the first problem is how do we know when to find them? Because normally we should use the update function and check every frame how many nodes we have and draw a line between them. But we want to visualize this in the editor. So we can't use the update function because this function is only executed in game. Luckily for us, there is a function which is executed inside the editor. It's called onDrawGizmos. And this function actually works the same as the update in the game. The only difference is that this function is executed when the scene view updates. And to use this function, we first write our standard void. And the function of the name was on draw gizmos. The first thing we want to set is the color of the gizmos. Because we want the gizmos to have our own color, the line color. To do this, we write gizmos dot color equals our line color. So the next thing we want to do is every time we run the function we want to check our nodes, get the transform and draw a line between them. There is a function that finds all the child objects of an object. So if we say we want to find all our child transforms, we can do that by using the function get components in children. But this function also takes its own transform. So we need to filter this one out. We first make a new list of type transform and let's call this one path transforms and we equal this to the function get components in children. Make sure you get the components and not component. Uh, we want to find the type of transform and close it off with round brackets. So now this array contains all the transforms, but also the transform of ourself. To filter this out, we're going to loop through this array. And if the transform is not our own transform, we're going to push it to our nodes. And to make sure our list is empty at the beginning, we're going to set this to a new list. So write nodes equals new list of type transform, round brackets to close it off. So now we know this list is empty at the beginning and now we want to loop through our array. An easy way to do this is to use a for loop. 
So we write 4 int i equals 0. i is less than our path transforms dot length. And then we increment i by 1 each time, so i plus plus. And every time we loop through this array, we want to check if the path transform of our current node is not equal to our own transform. Then we're going to push it to the nodes array. So if this is not equal to our own transform, then we say nodes dot add our path transforms with index i. So it loops through each of our transform in path transforms. It picks one out. It checks if it's it checks if it is not our own transform, and if it's not our own transform, it adds it to our nodes array. So this nodes array only contains our child nodes and not itself. So let's set up some nodes first. We have already one node, so we want to position this somewhere in front of the car. So this is our starting node. And make sure it's somewhere around the same height of the car. So in the middle of the car's height. This will make things easier later on. So this is our first node. Then we're going to duplicate this node. You can hit Ctrl D. And now this node, we're going to set it up here. Then we have another node. Hit Ctrl D again and set it up somewhere over here. So now we have three nodes, one at the start, then one at the corner and one over here. So now that we know that nodes only contains the child nodes, we can use this to draw a line between them. The way we're going to do this is to loop through this nodes list and for each node we draw a line. So let's make another for loop. Again, integer i equals zero. Then i is less than the nodes dot count. And we don't use length because this is a list and list use count instead of length. So i is less than nodes dot count. And then we increment this by one. So i plus plus. Next up we make a new vector three variable and this will be the current position of the node. So we make a new vector three. We call this one current node. And we equal this to the nodes with index i dot position. So from this transform, we take the position and store this in the current node. And next up, we want to take a previous node and draw a line between the previous node and the current node. So we make a new vector three for the previous node. And let's call this previous, previous node. And we equal this to the nodes and then our index minus one. So this is our current minus one. So it's our previous. And also take the position of this. But wait, we have a problem over here. If we go ahead and just do our index minus one, we come to a problem. For example, if we take index 1, this is our current node. And if we take our index minus 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. We have this node as our current node and this node as our previous node. So the result will be a line between this one and this one. But now comes the problem. If we are, index, if we are at index 0, this is our current node. And then we do our index, so 0 minus 1 which will be minus one. And we don't have an index of minus one. So the thing we want to do, if we are at index zero, we want to go to the last node. So this will be four. And then the result will be, we draw a line between a current node and the last node, which isn't minus one, but the last one in the list. So the result will be also a line between this node and this node. 
and then we will fix the problem. So a workaround to do this is before we set the previous node, we check if our index is greater than zero. And if it is so, then we know that there we know that we can get our previous node by doing the index minus one. And else if our index so i is equal to zero and our nodes that count is greater than one so we have at least two nodes then we can say that our previous node is the last node in our list so let's get this variable out of here just copy this and remove the declaration and let's set it above here so vector 3 previous node and just close it off so here so now we make a variable over here and here fill it in and in the else we write previous node equals our nodes with the index of nodes dot count minus one and also take the position of this so if we're not on index zero we take the previous node and else we take the last node in the array so the total amount of nodes minus one because we start counting at one and our index starts at zero so there's a difference of one so now that we have our current node and the previous node we can draw a line between them and still inside this for loop we're going to write gizmos dot draw line and inside the brackets we need to say two positions so the starting position and the ending position so the starting will be our previous node and the ending will be our current node it looks like unity doesn't like this way um, so we assign a default vector 3 to this node which will be vector3.0 and if you go back to unity and let it recompile we can now apply our script to our parent path so go to your path object drag the path script into it let's make the color white also make sure the alpha value is turned up all the way and if you still can see it the same way as I do we go to gizmos and uncheck 3d icons and I figured out I made the typo in a script the name of the function I typed it wrong so let's change this to the right on draw gizmos let's save it again go back to unity let it recompile and now we can see our line so we can see our starting node then we have a second node the third node and the third node goes back to the beginning I'm going to set up this path real quick and you can make your own path if you want. So this is done. Make sure you don't overdo it. Because your car isn't following the exact path. But only uses it as a guide. I have a total of 24 nodes. And this is more than enough. So now we can see our path. But we can't see the exact nodes. I think it's easier to see the nodes and the path at the same time. So let's get back to our script. And where we draw the line, we also want to draw a sphere. So write gizmos dot draw wire sphere. Then we need to set a center point. The center point will be the current node, and then a radius, which we can set to around 0.3. Make sure you get the f after the number because this is a float. Save the script. Let's go back, and now we can see each node. And this makes things some easier. In some kind of way, these lines are very distracting. So I think it's better that we only see this line when we select the path. This is only a small change in the script. So let's go back. And instead of on draw gizmos, we say on draw gizmos selected. So only when this object is selected, this function will be executed. So save it. Let's go back. And we now have selected our object. But when, when we unselect it, the part is not visible. And when we select it again, the part is visible. 
so this will make things a lot easier. With this I want to end the first episode. In the next episode we're going to add a rigid body to our car and add the wheel colliders. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe if you don't want to miss new videos. Also if you got any questions on my Facebook page iImaginary you can ask your questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.